here's a land just off the Atlantic Land of jungles, waterfalls and sweet scenery Where poor people farm the lands and hunt the waters And all live in peace and harmony This is Guyana Beautiful Guyana This is Guyana Beautiful Guyana Diamond seekers Go in the interior Pulling their... Thank you for coming, we appreciate your presence and this is a very special evening because of the special person that we're honoring today. And the program that we are presenting was uh, planned with much effort. There were a lot of people who called asking to be a part of after we have compiled the program. If you're sitting in the audience, our apologies to you. We could not have uh, added everyone to the program. Excuse me. We want to do this a little differently because we are expecting this program to be really, really spicy. But Malcolm, I'll put you on the spot and ask you to come back here and do the welcome and the vote of thanks. We're putting it at the top because we, we are going to assure you that when you leave here this evening, you will be jumping down the stairs because you wouldn't have such great time. So we will, we will put a twist on this and do the welcome and the vote of thanks now. Say welcome and thank you. <laughs> I'm that Frank guy. I'm from the, I, actually I'm from the school of math. And let me just give my little two pennies while I have the opportunity. Um, I had the very good fortune in the early 70s, I would say, uh, when I graduated to start in broadcasting before I started in dance. And I worked with the Federation Bert Stiftung, which was an organization that basically broadcasted Caribbean heritage and African, Caribbean link of an African heritage. And that time, I don't know, I was quite young. And the first person that I ever had to record is Wordsworth McKenzie. We spent countless hours in the studio compiling the magazine. Now, you can well imagine I was just out of school, and here was this guy that was very impressionable in a lot of ways. And a couple of weeks after I met Mac, I was known to be walking around Georgetown without shoes. <laughs> And that set a trend in my life that has been sort of unique because he taught me how to just be me. And subsequent to that, having worked in film, having worked uh, in the theater, having worked globally, having worked as an executive in a bank and all of that, the one thing I've always learned, always be me. And that's what I learned from that. Nothing will change that. Um, my task today is to welcome you. And it bears me pain to welcome you because of the last several months at an organizational level, we were very much involved in putting together a chapter for Carrie Festa for the Ghana government. And in the midst of all of that, we were at the same time Claire Boring, who is not here and will be here, and Ingram who was somewhat a service provider for Mac, continue on a daily basis to provide us information. And we started a dialogue with the government to start to think in terms of what would become the inevitable. And we started to have a dialogue around finding a suitable discussion around how do we honor Mac. And while that discussion was happening, we got the phone call. And of course, we were in the midst of that 
dialogue with the Ghana government about arming them. So it's among and with that thought in mind that the folks were gathering, the, 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 the clips you saw here, and if you go on YouTube, you'll see some clips that we put out there, and we'll be putting more clips on there, because we feel it's particularly important to keep Matt alive, because he's meant so much to so many people, and has certainly taught us in a unique way how to be guided. I'm also here to acknowledge on behalf of um, Max's family and on behalf of the Gavin Cultural Association. And somewhere over the next few days, you'll get a formal acknowledgement on our behalf because, as you're well aware, for those of you that are close to Gavin Cultural Association, we have named the awards the McCandrew Award. And this is something we've done seven years ago. That's how we felt about McCandrew. So, you can well understand that we're not here sitting providing empty praises, but more something that we're living something that we believe and have done over the last seven years of the Ghana Cultural Association. And it's important to understand that every time that we meet, and we have to think in terms of who we will give an award to that year, we give it with a set of parameters that's guided by the single principle about integrity, contribution to the Guyanese in more ways than one, and true to oneself in terms of our art form and things like that. So I want to thank you for being here. And I know some of you will have your unique stories about Mac and ways he have touched your lives. But I know from, for us at the Gap Cultural Association, he touched us and touched our lives in a unique way. So, on behalf of the association, Max Relatives, I want to right up front acknowledge thanks to the folks. And I want to give a particular acknowledgement to Ingram, who has served as a conduit for Mac and us, the Gavin Cultural Association. So please do um, start that acknowledgement. He played a vital role in providing services and keeping us in contact with Mac on a daily basis. And I do mean a daily basis. So thank you ever so much and I'll turn it back to the folks so that we can get going right now. Thank you. I want to ask Christine Williams to come forth and she will lead us with the two anthems of one of the US and one of Diana. Christine 
have to say. So guess what? You're on stage too. You will be performing our native land.
the essence of time. So um, some items will not be introduced, so bear with me for that. But I want to ask Rudy Shaw to come to the stage right now, and he's going to do a poem if we must apply. Ladies and gentlemen, Rudy Shaw. Thank you. If I don't have to just want to say, um, the first time I saw Words Work was at the end of the end, uh, uh, British piano at the time. And I would say, the song booth with my friend, the late Charles King. And he said, You see the man there? There he is, Words Work my country. Yeah, y'all looking. You see how serious he's looking? We were looking at some white play, but Words Work was there. And Charles King said, There is Words Work my country, a real artist. And I tried to live up to his standards, and I had the honor of working with him subsequently in the broadcast of schools programs, and um, I had the honor also of recording his uh, poem all live on my CD, which he didn't commission for. And I'm really grateful for that. And uh, my we spent a Christmas Day, he spent with my family also. And I'm grateful for that. So when I heard him pass, I said, "This is a life that's not in vain." And he was a fighter for our culture. To keep it alive in a colonial environment that we all came out of, uh, if you were born in my time. <laughs> so I chose If We Must Die. If We Must Die. Let it not be like hogs, hunted and penned in an inglorious spot, while around us bark the mad and hungry dogs, making their mock of our accursed lot. If we must die, Oh, let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us, though dead. Oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Though far outnumbered, let us show us brave, and for their thousand blows, Deal one death blow. What though before us lies the open grave? Like men, we'll face the murderous, cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying, but fighting back. Thank you. His name is listed among one of the famous Ghanaians. If he wasn't, he ought to be. Because he was, I would say, a forerunner of so many of us. I know he would have liked this particular song because he totally liked it some time ago. Oh, 
you're likely to come away with far more information than your thought was inherent to that question. Because he had to supply you with the where force and the whys, the background and the origin and the circumstances. He was a linguist who played with language like like Nitty. He schooled me in nuances, warned me to dance a bottom watch a top. He even wrote me poetry. Better I share with you. Maybe. Mark lived in these United States, but he never called here his home. Home is where you live in Street Delhi. And he would never have stayed here if he'd felt that his countrymen would embrace him again. So why is a, an icon who has taught and expended and given as much as he not held aloft in his native country. Now you cannot say Mac was, had no ego, yet he often subjugated himself. You can't say he was modest, yet he shunned the accolades of recognition. This intellectual who was unencumbered by self-importance, an unpretentious, complex man who was one of me. Now how can a man be as brilliant as a star, yet so loath to let it shine? On the century. How can this man, so impeccably knowledgeable, refuse to have his wisdom published? A non-conformist. Non how can a man who knew the importance of legacy be so reluctant to chronicle his own? On the Enigma. Now, if you were to ask me what I treasure more about my relationship with Mac, it would be this, that in recent years he sought my opinion and asked my advice from time to time. Me, a mere small fry, comparatively. And despite being a, a middle-aged woman, that always sparked me, as if I were still his teenage assistant. But that was part of the uniqueness of the man he knew that he knew, but he also knew that in this place, in this space, there was so much more he wanted to know. Research, research, research. That was his mantra. But I did none of this, none of that for this piece. Because having had the honor to experience the man, I didn't have to start him. Wordsworth Albert MacAndrew was someone whom we all knew to varying degrees. And if, even if we were to put all those degrees together, we would discover that no one can say that he or she knew the total word scene. For such an enigma of a man. As for the uh, poem you wrote me, I came back from lunch one day and it was on my desk. It read, when you go away, when you go away, for lunch, or home, or anything, zoom goes the sky, the sun goes in, and all is cloud and gloom. But soon, on a good day, brown hips sway, luscious legs shuffle, gaseous style around the bend, and gloom is at an end. Now, that was the kind of imagery this master wordsmith could pen in less than an hour. Thank you, ma'am. I'm missing, missing you. you.
just come to pay a brief tribute to a man who was my very close friend, Wordsworth McAndrew. I met Wordsy in about 1965. We were both working at the GIS, and we, he was working on a radio program. I tell you a little anecdote about Wordsy. We went to a place called Dartmouth in Essequibo to record a Kongfa. Kongfa is a spiritual ritual where you invoke spirit from the area ground. As the, the brother Damon uh, explained it, he said, you go to the area ground, sprinkle rum at the four corners, and invite all his ancestors, his relatives, to come to the thing. And we start playing the drums. I, I got a tape recorder. Mark has the microphone interviewing the guy. And when the drums started, before I knew it, Wordsworth got taken up by a comfort spirit. He dropped the microphone and everything. And the man got dancing. I got to get this. So look, Wordsy, we are reporters. We come to cover this thing, not to take part in the thing. So that's how our friendship started. And then I left Diane, of course, and, and we picked up the pieces when we got here. And I was lucky to have Wordsworth edit my book, Medici, for the new edition that's coming out. He was not there for the first edition. Person who edited did a poor job. And I got Wordsworth to, to edit the whole thing. So I'm going to talk briefly about come true, just a quick explanation so you understand the difference. Come true basically is bringing in a spiritual, like a medium. Come true people are mediums. And the spirit comes through you. So with a come true ritual, you're actually invoking a spirit to come through the medium. Now, there's a difference between come true and journalites, of course, in different branches of spiritualism. And some people call all branches of spiritualism obia, which is not true. Obia has a negative connotation, so it's it, using spiritual powers for negative purposes. If those of us who are spiritual mediums do have some perception of the etherical world of spirit. And some of us use that power for negative purposes. I'm going to have my brother Abdul, I know he's itching to talk. And I, I'm going to have him. Libation is the process in which we give thanks first and foremost to the Creator. And anytime you do anything, especially something of this magnitude, the first thing that one should do is to invoke the presence of God. And before we were speaking English language, African people, Indian people, Chinese people, everybody within their native tongue have a name for the Creator. In, in Africa, you have Olodumare, Olorun, Unkulunkulu, so forth and so on, and I can go on and on. But to within the context of our ancestors from Nigeria, I want to say Mujuba or the room. I share, I share, I share. Mujuba, Orishas. The Orishas are the elements. Those are the things that the Creator has created that will enable us to sustain us while we're here on planet. And that's air, fire, water, earth. Anytime any one of those elements go out of balance, we are in a serious situation, especially oxygen. Three to five minutes without it, life ceases to exist. And those are the origins. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. The Igugunus are your ancestors. Because of them, you are. They're the ones who have made it possible for you to be here today. They're the ones who have cleared the pathway. So we must always give credence and acknowledgement to our ancestors. 
especially your mother, she could have changed your mind. I share, I share, I share. And thank you very much. I am going to ask good old Rickford Dalgetty to come forth. Following Rickford, we'll have Quasi with a reflection, and then we'll have Venice de Grio with Dramology. Following that, we'll have a brief intermission. We have free snacks with emphasis on a cash bar. Okay? Yeah, you were supposed to. Yeah, that's okay. You were supposed to react. That's okay. Uh, so that's how we'll go through to the uh, intermission of the program. I present to you the one and only Rickford Dalgari! Now where is he? <laughs> good evening and good night. It is... Yeah, he's never had a good sense of time with anyway, so it's just right in the boat there. It's um, unfortunate that we meet under these circumstances. I hope we, when we have the concerts we see so many of you. But um, on the other hand, it's good that so many people came out to really give Mac uh, the send-off that he truly deserves. You know, uh, I'm recalling Many years ago, around 1975, we were trying to do a rehearsal at the GBS studio. Myself, Roland Phillips, Mac, and some other folks. And um, we got the lead of the night talking about music and folk music and culture. And one of the things that Mac taught us, he said, you know, anything can become a folk song. You know, as long as it expresses the way of life the people that you're talking about. And uh, right there, you know, Matt broke into uh, a folk song, which really became his, his creation, right in, right in the studio at, uh, at GBS. If you want a shoe, William Fogarty's want a shot. William Fogarty's, you want book bag? William Fogarty's, exercise book? William Fogarty's, you want something? William Fogarty's, you want nothing? William Fogarty's, and you want a bag? William Fogarty's, and you want a lad? William Fogarty's, cakey pants? William Fogarty's, then to shut? William Fogarty's, a big search pants? William Fogarty's, bull sack of boots? William Fogarty's, anything you want? William Fogarty's, Anything you want, William Bagatis. Anything you want, William Bagatis. Anything you want, William Bagatis. <laughs> the funny thing is that, you know, even with the changing times, he never changed it to the bargain. William <laughs> 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 Now, man, I love calling me. 
You see, when you come from a country, that tongue that confuses with language. Don't want to think like what you some people. But they miss me like, are you, are you got funny ways? Tell me I'm writing my paper and I got a script. So they say, give your script. Well, they give me the paper. So I watch it. Me tell you this. All the word for the paper, me know. But when they tell me, all right, this is your part reader. Me watch a thing and my tongue get tired. I'll be trying to read, me can't read. I'm your man in the days when you see me frightened. I'll be very used to not about me or hurt me. Me very start to hurt me. Me hide the yard, you see. Me head start to hurt me. Me mouth start to stammer. Me watch them word, me don't get down. Me step, dip, dip. Word me know, me forget. Anyway, that's it. That's it. Oh, Lord. They put me there several times, but I'll put this thing by tape. So I'll sit on there. Why am I sit on there? Why am I sit on there? They say, well, when you talk your part, then you will talk your part, and then he will talk your part. So they say, you got to be on a conversation. Whenever they come to me part, they forget the word. <laughs> Mark watch me. He said, well, I'm fine. You got to relax. He said, Try for relax. He said, well, breathe. He said, me didn't breathe. Me thought I didn't breathe. He said, you got to breathe. Breathe in and breathe out. He said, oh, you can breathe in and breathe in and breathe out. He said, breathe in more deep. Breathe out. Me be breathe now. So me time come. And be breathe. He said, well, talk. He said, we can't talk and breathe. What do you want me to breathe at? Well, you saw that they quiet me down. But when they quiet me down, they start talking. They say, I talk too fast. We got to slow down. So now they stop the thing. They say, man, go outside, go read the thing. Relax, read it, load it, and come back. When we go back, me and Mark, and me and Ken, and Mark attack. They were debating. One man said, bye. Hmm. The man nervous. The other one said, no. You think he's frightened? <laughs> they said, what, what, what the man talk about me? The other one said, no. You think I'm high? He's an artist. And I was like, nah, he was he crazy. <laughs> because if he left little baby for coming, and when he did for read for make himself somebody, he now read. Something wrong with him. Me take it easy. Me go in. And me breathe. Me breathe. But we had one bad habit of the breathe used to shut me eye. <laughs> so now whenever I read me the river, they say, you go! You can walk me and say, that thing is somehow going to start over. <laughs> but it's now only take them five minutes for tape, because it take them five hours. But the man had patience with me. And Mark gave him advice after them. He said, whenever you go do something, make sure you watch them. Understand them. Learn them. And he said, but underlying thing, we are going to be in trouble. And from that day, me a watch him, me a learn him, me a underline him. Sometimes he give me trouble, and me a watch him again, me a learn him, and me a underline him. If he give me more trouble, me a watch him, me a learn him, me a underline him. I know me get so much trouble. Me a teach me that thing. Say watch him. Say what you want. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Learn him. And the line him. No matter what it is, watch him. Learn him. And the line him. You don't get trouble. If you wipe on him, watch him. Learn him. And the line him. If you pick the watch him, body him. Watch him. Learn him. And the line him. When you body yourself, watch him. Learn him. And the line him. That is secret in life. That will not teach me. But on a serious note, we got to rethink this whole thing that we are thinking about death. This whole thing about death, we got to rethink. We might talk in English now, but forgive me. Death is not what we perceive it to be. We were born simply because God has put life into us. And life is eternal. Because we have come from an eternal God. Mark has not died. He has fallen asleep.
asleep. And they will come a time when the dead that are sleeping in the mud, it has been mentioned in the book of Daniel. Hundreds of years before Daniel mentioned it, it was mentioned by the prophet Isaiah. The dead that sleeps in the mud will rise. Rise not with these perishable bodies, but with imperishable bodies. Now we're not just going to be risen like that. We'll be risen for a purpose. And that purpose will depend on how you spend your life here and now. If you spend it doing things that are not godly, then you'll be risen or you'll rise to go on the ungodly side of life. If you pursue the things of Jesus Christ, if you pursue the things of God, when you rise, you will rise to meet him in the sky. When you rise without knowledge and without living a life for Jesus Christ, you will be rising to damnation and shame. When you rise because of your belief in God, and your acceptance of Jesus Christ, you'll be rising for eternal life in heaven. May God bless you. Watch him, learn him, have a life.
stand. This is one of Ford's first brother. And before you take a seat, I would like to present a poem that was written by Robert Mahesh. He just came forth to me and said, because Wordsworth has touched him in such a special way as a teacher, he wrote something and he wanted to offer it to a family member. So on behalf of Robert M, uh, Robert H, sorry, Mahesh, I present this poem to you, family. Thank you. 
The man himself. Man got manners. Get big poo poo. And look what I got from the scouter. One thousand plus profits. Which he gave to me in 1979 before he came to the United States. My mother's equivalent was and willing man, kaka lili. Willing man, kaka big, big. The scouter believed that all proverbs gave lots of advice. And so the proverbs that I'm relating to you, I just picked them randomly because I thought they had some good advice for them. Don't want to explain them, I'm going to leave them for you to interpret. Because I believe you are following the problem. Man must see white bus before by bed. And when I was a boy growing up in Dartmouth, just the Abraham up from Dartmouth, there was this little short man and his wife was. So I used to look at them on the press. And I don't think he realized this proper. Man must see white bus before he by bed. And then the follow. To continue with marriage, marriage got deep, bite like crap. <laughs> I don't need to explain that. If you're married, you probably know that. I know Married like a back door. And to, to follow up that, a couple of years ago in Kitty, there was a story that is connected to the problem. Uh, there was some man who was doing something outside of his marriage with some lady who was married to another man. And so the man found out that somebody was giving you blow, as he said. So he took off his back step. <laughs> took off the back step. And he lay in wait. When he realized the man had gone in, he came up this, the front steps with his cutlass in his hand. He started making a lot of nights. And you know what the man do? He rubbed with the back door. I heard he's still lying down now. Well, little man put down big man choices. Why you get too much check? <laughs> I have a nephew who calls me regularly from Guyana. Uncle Roy. Yeah. And you know, so and so, 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 so Uncle Roy. Every minute, Uncle Roy. So I told him, I said, by the When little boy put down big man trousers, you must take what you get. He said, What do you mean? And then I had to tell him the other one. When trouble catch. Man, he took a stagger. When trouble gets a man, he sit down and consider. He said, what do you mean? He said, well, yeah. when little boy put down big boy in choices, you got to take what you get. <laughs> and then, a couple of proverbs from some correspondents. One of the things I used to do for Scouter was write letters for him. And uh, this was a letter that was sent to somebody whose name is Colin Chumley. He's not here. And they, apparently, he had been asking Mac for a long time to do something. And finally, Scouter decided to do it. And the problem here is. How you spring does make crab work? So he wasn't doing it all along and suddenly decided to do it. Because how you spring does make crab work? And 
Then, in another part of the letter, he said, You, more than everybody else, would understand this proverb, my partner. If what I'm asking you, you can't do, remember the proverb said, Don't give away your BT. I should not tell your roots. Oh, 
Good job, Scaling It Down. Thank you. Where's Rickford? Rickford, you're up. I don't see him. Oh, he's coming. Um, he's coming down. He's coming down. One morning, the captain wakes. Ah. Captain wakes, he wakes the boatman. Ah. Boatman wakes, he wakes the bowman. Ah. Bowman wakes with a paddle in hand. Ah. All I want is a long and strong, long and strong. It's too much of me, long and strong. Eat and a me, eat and a me, eat and a me. Thank 
Tobago from all over the place. But one thing is very important is we all of us, no matter where we come from, we belong to one big family. Only one big family. Because when they took our ancestors from Africa, they left one group in Jamaica, one in Haiti, one in the United States. But in fact, we belong all of us to the same family. That's the reason today I'm so pleased to be in my family, right here. And I don't want you to be bored, because after you finish to listen to Mr. Wickford, I cannot say too long. Otherwise, otherwise you're going to be bored. I just want to express my heartfelt sympathy to the parent of Mr. Uh, McAndrew, and also to all the guys over here. Again, from the bottom of my heart, my sympathy to all of you. And let's stay together, let's stay united. This is the only way we, go, we are going to have the true empowerment for our community. Thank you very much. I hear drums. 
Black comes speaking black history. And my blood melted the soul away. My spirit plucked wings of strange memories. And my old being ran away to Africa. Africa, the land of the jungle. The kingdom of drums, the heaven of songs. Paradise of tongues of thunder. I hear the drums and I remember. I remember as an apostle of the jungle. I was beaten by the to call the sun. I beat him in the evening when the rain comes down. I beat him in the dark. I beat him in the dry. I beat him in Africa. The only cry. Drums! Drums of Africa.
said, oh, perform all high, that you perform at the cultural center for many years ago, and I said, no, I'm going to perform words for Ohio because I would like to pay tribute to him. So here is words for
If you know this song, you can join me. I'm not a good singer, but I'm going to try to try. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya. drenching rain and tears and tears could dissuade the quest of the word. But let the word rest. Let the word fall. Listen to its call. Let the conversation be pure and sweet, dripping words that lips alone can speak. A treasure is found where no man sees. Why the fall tree gives off, or will it be to come again in spring? Sure, the summer clings indel indelibly to your mind and everything. Or sure, the wandering wind sharpens distance and freezes in the winter. But the words remain steadfast and sure, though the billows roll. Words were dance where the sun meets the sea, where our young eyes could not see. Over rough and rocky terrain, over smooth and lovely lanes, across tropical plains and sea walls, sun kissed shore. From the resplendent Baccarinus peaks of Perth, to Currentine's lush land, and Dran of Taicho's imperial store. But let the word fall, let the world rest, listen to its call. Let the conversation be pure and sweet, dripping words that lips alone can speak. A treasure's found where no man seeks. Therein lies the worth of the word. Walk good. Have a good night. <laughs> Sheep. Share your sheep. Do you remember those days? <laughs> 
the land Just off the Atlantic Land of jungles, waterfalls And sweet scenery Where poor people farm the lands And hunt the waters And all live in peace and harmony This is Guyana Beautiful 